Um, I just got our live stream up and running, and I'm going to go ahead and mute our participants right now so that everyone can hear whoever is our designated speaker in the moment. Um, we want to to offer a special um, a special welcome today to our friends at Trinity in Oakland. Uh, it is a very Trinity Sunday today. Um, we're so happy that you're here. Uh, Pastor Ned has this week, this Sunday off. He is celebrating his his marriage this week to Jose, and we are we are over the moon excited for them. So please add a special prayer this week um, for the beginning of their marriage together. Long time relationship, just now getting married, and we're so excited. Um, so welcome to all of you from Trinity Oakland. Uh, just a couple of, of quick announcements this morning. Most of you got, got the newsletter, I hope, or a phone call uh, letting you know that this week our, our council met on Wednesday night to reevaluate our uh, plans to resume in-person worship. The original plan was that starting today, our eight o'clock service would resume in person and we would be resuming in person on September 26th um, for, for both services. But we determined that with the new information that is constantly being uh, discovered about the Delta variant, right now was maybe not the most prudent time for us to, to start that process. Our council meets the fourth Thursday, sorry, the fourth Thursday of every month. And so at each of our meetings, we're going to re-examine and reevaluate um, our decision and, and our timeline for this resumption of in-person worship. We are so thankful that you have been patient uh, in, in worshiping with us online, that you continue to come week after week. Um, some of you calling in on your telephone, as opposed to those of us who are able to see one another, we know that this is not a substitution for being together in worship, but it certainly is a blessing um, that we have this option during this time that it's less safe for us to be together. So uh, continue to pray also for our discernment in that and for the doctors, nurses, and leaders of our country and our world who are trying to get things under control so that we can do these things safely. Um, we also wanted to, I wanted to remind you that in each of our weekly, um, in each of our weekly uh, emails, I am sending out a question for you to answer. Um, about your experiences this year to help us process individually and collectively what this time apart has meant for us and how we're um, growing or changing as people, how our priorities are growing or changing, how um, we're learning new things about ourselves and what we need to, um, to, to live full lives. I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone one more time just to make sure that uh, I'm not distracted and neither are you. Um, and, and finally, uh, just, just a, a, quick, um, a quick reminder that Nope, I don't remember what that quick reminder was. That's why I write things down. Um, there will be a special prayer today, though, uh, for the family of Bill Horn. He, uh, he was the vice president of the ELCA, which uh, congregationally is like the pre president of the congregation. Um, he died unexpectedly yesterday of um, a, a possible heart attack in Florida. And so we are with his family and we are with our brothers and sisters in the ELCA and with uh, the leaders of the ELCA who are, um, who are both mourning his loss and wondering what is next. So uh, if you'll please keep that family in your prayers, we appreciate that. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Eternal Lord, we live in a world of anguish and our sin only multiplies our suffering. Our despair discourages others. Our hopelessness paralyzes us from carrying out your work in the world. We pray for mercy, for strength, and for our faith to be restored, knowing that all good things come from you. Amen. Amen. God will indeed make all things new. Our creator knows, hears, and answers the cries of our hearts. Despair no more, for the one who comes in power also comes in love and death has no dominion in the world to come. Receive our Lord's promise of pardon, renewal, and peace, which knows no end. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Living Christ, you are our hope when all hope has failed. Gather us under your wings of mercy and renew Renew your your song song of praise praise within our hearts. In your holy name we pray. Amen. At this time, I would like to find our kids who are with us. I know that we have, oh, there goes my kid. Um, I know that we have August with us. Say hi. Say hi. I'm gonna pin you here. Do we have any, do we have any other younger friends to join us today? Okay, this is us. Well, good morning. How are you doing, hon? How are you doing, August? You doing, August? Tomorrow's a big day for you, isn't it? What's happening tomorrow? It's my fourth day of school. It's your first day of school. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. And and are are you at all nervous? No. No. No, because you can't wait to be with your friends, right? What, what are you most excited about for tomorrow? Are you excited about something special tomorrow? To see, to see new friends. See new friends. To see new friends? Sure. And you got to meet your teacher this week? Did you get to meet your teacher? Do you like right. your teacher? Yeah. Yes, so that's going to be exciting too. And do you have do you have special school supplies you get to bring with you to school? Do you? What what, what kind of special things do you get to bring to school with you tomorrow? Water bottle. A yeah, water bottle. bottle. Yes. And snacks. And snacks. And do you have crayons? Supplied by the school. Wow. That wasn't even happening 40 years ago. (laughs) And do you do you get to bring things in a special bag? Maybe. Yeah. She's still learning the joys of the first day of school, it sounds like. She'll have lots to share after her first day. Well, I thought that before you went off to school, we would say a special prayer for you and for your teacher and for your mommy and daddy and for all of the new experiences you're going to have. So will you, will you pray with me? Do you think you could do that? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then (laughs) let's pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, we bring ourselves and our big feelings to you. Last year was different than we expected. We couldn't see our friends or play on playgrounds. We learned at home and we were in masks apart from each other. And in all these changes, sometimes we felt sad not to be with our friends. But this year we bring with us special things to help our school year be special. We bring our hearts and our feelings. We bring our snacks and our water bottles, our unanswered questions and hopeful expectations. We are excited for the endless possibilities of what this new year might bring and what we might learn, the new friends we might meet and who we might become. 
we remember that you, God, our friend, is always with us and that you will be with us through it all. Be with us on our way to school and on our way home from school. Be with us as we get ready in the morning and brush our teeth and come home at night and have a good evening with our family. We pray for the grown-ups who are going back to school, who are helping us and teaching us and making sure that we get the education we need. God who is with us, be with them too. And thank you for all of our teachers, helpers, caregivers, leaders, and parents, and for all they do to help us learn and grow. To our God who is full of wonder, amen. Amen. That was a long prayer. It was a special blessing. I don't say really long prayers very often, but this is something that needed a long prayer just to make sure that you have a really good year and that your mom and your dad are also ready for, for all that comes their way. Yeah, you'll never be ready, but welcome to elementary school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. We're going to move on to the next part of our service. We have been in the narrative lectionary um, going through a series of several weeks about the book of Revelation. And today our reading is from the fifth chapter of Revelation. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne, a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and he took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and, a, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slaughtered and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads of thousands of thousands singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this eternal life that you may, that may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God and the Lamb, the one who is and who was and who is to come. Amen. Christmas. We all have different traditions around Christmas, but I, I wonder um, whether some of you might have had a Christmas tradition that is similar to my own or memories of it at least. There were years that I would want a new outfit or something new that my friends had received for a birthday or something, and it was November or maybe December even. And my parents would say, well, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. But then there were times when I would be out with my mom or my dad and something would pop up as something that would be great to have or an outfit that looked particularly good on me. And my parents would look at me and they would say, well, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. It was rare that my parents would say, well, here, I'll buy it for you now. It'll just be one of your Christmas presents. Remember that on Christmas morning. No, no, no. I had parents who would buy it on that day and then I wouldn't see it again until I unwrapped it on Christmas morning. And I don't know what was harder. Waiting until I could finally use the thing I knew that my parents had purchased for me that was wrapped in one of these random boxes that I couldn't quite tell which one it was. Or just knowing that it was there, right? And saying, but it's there and I'm so close to being able to listen to that CD or to being able to wear that outfit that would be so perfect for today, whatever it was. No, I had to wait until we opened our Christmas presents before I got to use whatever it was my parents had decided to buy when they knew in that moment what it was that I wanted for Christmas. And today we have in our reading a similar moment. John has been invited up in a vision of the realm of heaven. And part of this vision is seeing a scroll that obviously, because it's written on both the front and the back of the page, obviously has so much information in it. It has been sealed with seven seals. That was relative because everyone who was reading this at the time would know that the seven seals meant it was an important legal document. That was the way a confidential communication like this would have been um, designated from the outside. They didn't have big stamps like we do now um, intended for, you know, for intended recipient only or confidential, that sort of thing. No, 
they had a number of seals that would indicate how it was supposed to be handled. The type of document that would have seven seals on it would be a last will and testament. So much that would be in that scroll to know that only the person who wrote it would at this moment know. And so the question goes up, who is worthy to open this scroll? Who is it that this communication has been intended for? I have another moment of anticipation like this in my life. I was driving my mom's pickup truck. It was, you know, just a little beat up pickup truck that she drove for a number of years. And um, I had taken it to run an errand while I was visiting home one spring break or something and went into a store, walked out of the store and went to open the doors. And the keys were sitting on the seat. They were not in my purse. They were not in my pocket. And I had used the automatic door lock to lock the truck because this was not a fancy truck. It didn't have one of those push button things. It was something you remembered to lock the door on your way out of the car. You just didn't always remember to have the keys in your hand while you did that. And it wasn't a cool day in Phoenix. So it must have been either spring break or the summer. And I remember sitting in the parking lot on the phone with my mom saying, do you have a spare set of keys? And she reveals to me that the pickup truck is just a beat up pickup truck and we have only one set of keys. There was a time that you could call a locksmith to go ahead and open a car for you. But it turns out this was a very long and drawn out process because they don't wanna find themselves breaking into someone else's car. Um, so eventually I did have someone come who could open the doors for me, but I sat there for a good hour and a half, just staring at the keys, hoping, wishing I could reach them on that seat because that's all that needed to happen for the rest of the day to, to go on, but I was stuck because I did not have the keys. So we hear the agony in John's voice, in his writing, as he says, oh, I wept, I wept for heaven and earth and all that are in it because there was no one worthy to open this seal and see what it said. And then they saw Jesus himself. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who was slain for our sins. Jesus, the root from the stump of Jesse, who continued the line of God's people. Jesus, the one who came down from heaven so that not only he as the son of God would inherit all this kingdom of heaven and earth, but that we too might become heirs. He opens the scrolls. Now, this week isn't the week that we read about everything that comes out of that scroll, everything that Jesus learns in that scroll or that we learn because Jesus opens that scroll. No, this week is the moment of great anticipation. The moment where we recognize how important it is for us to know, to know what God has in store 
for heaven and for earth and who it is that God has given dominion, how it is that God's people will be saved, how it is that God intends to welcome us all into this heavenly throne room. You might have noticed early in the reading that it says that all of these people who were in the throne room sang a new song. They sang, they sang with such great joy when they discovered that there was someone who could open this news of, of what was to come, these intentions of our God for the world that God created. And then we hear when, when Jesus picks up the scrolls, another new hymn sung, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. That refrain repeats over and over throughout the book of Revelation. In fact, much of our Lutheran liturgy comes from this book that seems obscure and strange and frightening to us. It is a book that Eugene Peterson says teaches us the purity of worship. Because in this moment, in this moment that could be about, um, that could be about all of the trappings in heaven, how beautiful the throne was or how loud things were or how quiet things were or how bright things were or dark. None of those things matter because at the very center, at the very heart, is Jesus Christ. And at that center, there is nothing for those in heaven or on earth to do, but to fall down and worship and give thanks and praise Jesus for who he is, recognizing that it is Jesus who will come to save. It is Jesus who has come to protect. It is Jesus who will lead us and guide us and direct us from this place on earth to our home in heaven. We live today in a world that looks very different from the scene we read about today in Revelation. The world we are stepping away from for this hour is full of pain and war and destruction and people who are in desperate need of salvation and help. We come to this place recognizing that we live in the not yet. We live in a time where we can see those keys on the seat of the car. In that time where we can see the box that holds the CD player. In a time when we know what we need, but we can't yet grab onto it. And Jesus walks on the scene. And without even opening the scroll, just the moment of knowing that there is one there who can bring such deep and abiding relief that all we can do is worship. In the midst of today's needs and pain and heartache, we have no other recourse but to worship and to praise the God that we know is with us and goes with us and has gone before us and brings us safely through the tribulation 
the struggles and trials of this earth that none of us are exempt from. We know that we have one who can walk through these things with us and bring us through to the other side in glory. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You bear God's word, O Christ, even as you embody that word. Speak in our time to us and through us 
that the spirit's power may move us as it did your first followers. Holy Lord, hear our hear prayer. Me. The church stands as a beacon of hope in the world that often loses heart. Keep us true to our mission and lead us away from preoccupation with petty, superficial, and non-essential things, lest our witness lose its power. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. A new school year is the perfect time to remind ourselves of what lies at the heart of our proclamation. Your eternal unyielding love, O oh God. Place it firmly within our hearts that it might guide our minds, our words, and our actions. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for those suffering lasting effects from the virus, and for medical workers. We pray especially for those in countries and regions with limited access to vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine and hunger and for those experiencing homelessness. We pray for all who are ill, for all who will receive no medical care. Heal them with your loving might. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. From your wounds we receive healing, sweet Lamb of God. You who have known deep suffering have the power to soothe our broken souls. Lay your hands upon those for whom we lift up in prayer for, to you, upon those whom we lift up in prayer to you, especially the family of Connie Stephen, Eleanor Treadwell, Kalagut Leben Dobbin, Bertha and Sharon Thomas, Carmen Smith, Marilyn, Michael Westcott, the family of Eric Abramson, Michael Rasmussen, Larry Hodgkin, Constance Farmer, Barber, Yim Mui, Adrienne McDonald, Sophia Laura, Hilka de Arce, Jackson Bohm, Mary Clevenger, Don Ledoux, Buddy and Sherry Scott, Kelly Wentz, Nancy Stitch, Patricia Bruno, Evelyn Berger, Gail Cromack, Kate Ganshaw, Don Grosskreutz, Jeff Klein, Michael Lamb, Maddie Pierce, Willie Pruitt, Christine Lindbergh, and Dorothy Wingeyer. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for the ministries of your word, for Trinity Church Council, the priesthood of all believers, Christ Episcopal Church in Alameda, the Lutheran Church of Kajatumba in Rwanda, the Lutheran Ministry to Nursing Homes, and the East Bay Lutheran Youth Program. We pray for the fullness of the lives of Kathy Booker, Rob Cabrera, and Pam Lothian as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. The prayers of your saints are like sweet incense. Have mercy on us for the sake of all the faithful and keep us united as one family in you. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, you are invited to pray the prayers of your heart, either silently or aloud. And remember to unmute yourself if you would like to pray aloud. Precious Lord, we give you great thanks for the life of Bill Horn and the generous way he shared his gifts, both with the city of, Clear, uh, of Clearwater as their longtime city manager and with our ELCA church. We ask you be with his family and friends who are missing him intensely right now and see them through this time. Precious Lord, hear our prayer. Here. We pray God for the people of Afghanistan, for the people of Haiti, for the people of Japan, for people who are looking for someone to help them and to um, rescue them from danger. God, in, our, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer.
By your will, everything exists, ourselves included. We lay our supplications and praise before your throne, trusting always that you receive our prayers with love and mercy for the sake of the Lamb who offered himself up for us. Amen. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Here in a moment, we'll have an opportunity to share that peace with one another in our breakout rooms. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.